on your journeys, whether going or coming, from now until forever, from now. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. God, thank you. Thank you for your word that instructs us and that challenges us and that teaches us and that encourages us to look to you. God, we ask that you would be in and through what is said this morning. God, may it be your words that are said and your words that are heard, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we continue. We continue with another look at the few of my favorite things sermon series. So over the past couple of weeks, we heard from Pastor Bob's favorite scriptures. And it's been a really fun sermon series, I think. I don't know about you, but I've really enjoyed being able to see some of the things that are important to the pastors here. Now, when I was approached about this idea of preaching on a favorite passage, it was difficult. It was really difficult for me. I had so many things racing through my mind. It was so hard to pick. Would I go, would I go to the theme and the foundation of what I see next generation ministry being through Deuteronomy chapter 6? But I've preached on that before, so I wouldn't need to do that. Or maybe would I go to Acts and the birth of the church? I absolutely love the book of Acts. Or maybe, maybe I'd look to the Great Commandment or the Great Commission or the baptism of Jesus from one of the Gospels, which is such a great picture of the triune God. Or maybe, maybe I dive into an Old Testament story. Well, I needed at that point, with all those things raised through my mind, to go to God in prayer and to pray for God to give me an idea of what it is that he would have me share. So in this time, in this time of COVID and chaos and strife and division and polarization among so many, and trying to figure out, trying to figure out how we shall live and how we can love each other well in this time of social distancing of six feet apart, there are so many questions that we're facing. Do we take the summer vacations that we had planned? Or do we just stay home? Will there be sports? These are questions that are big in my house. Will there be sports? Will there be a football season? Will they go back to school? Or will school be online again? What's that going to look like? How do we go about life? How do we go about life with all of this going on around us? And even beyond that, there are huge questions. Huge questions like how we can stand. How we can stand with our brothers and sisters of color in this time. Not when it's just a current hot-button topic, but how can we do that with lasting change? In all of this, God brought me to one of my favorite psalms, Psalm 121. This psalm for me is tied. It's tied to a very, very, very vivid memory. A vivid memory of time with God in prayer and in reading his word in beautiful creation that God has made. I want you to hear these words again of Psalm 121, but this time from the New International Version. This is the version that's very clear to me, and this is what I read, and this is what I have pretty much committed to memory. So here it is from the New International Version. I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade by your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. So before I dive into this psalm, let me share with you the significance of where this came from and why this became so significant to me. This is a number of years ago now as I think about it. Back in the summer of 1993, which is maybe before some people were even born, um, back in that summer of 1993, I spent the summer in Yellowstone National Park on a mission trip, on a mission trip with a college ministry which is now known as Crew. I went with a couple other friends from college, and we met with other students from around the country and other staff members of the campus ministry as well. Now, the theme of the summer, the theme of the summer was the great adventure. Anybody remember that Stephen Curtis Chapman song? 
that, uh, that um, saddle up your horses. We got a trail to blaze through the wild blue yonder of God's amazing grace. Well, anyway, that was the theme song and that was the theme of that summer. But we went there. We went there to work jobs in the park. And while most people worked in housekeeping or in food service, I worked in a gift shop at the Canyon area. And we worked and we were in ministry. And that is what we were doing, work and ministry. But we did have some free time as well. So I have so many memories of that summer. So many memories, like being challenged, like being challenged to share the gospel with people um, in situations that were so clearly God-ordained, so clearly God had laid them before us. Or seeing God's hand of protection as a car that I was riding in um, at night hit a bison, um, hit it, and it totaled the car. Now that animal, that huge animal, just snorted and walked away. Nothing happened to it, but the car was totaled. But thankfully, thankfully, that animal did not charge back at us um, because all I saw out of my passenger window was that eye, this giant head. Because if you're familiar with them, they have huge heads. This giant head with this eye staring me down. I don't know if you've seen or remember the movie The Man from Snowy River where it zooms in on the eye of that horse and it's like, here's the eye. And then it zooms in even more and even more. Well, that whole picture is what was playing through my mind. This giant eye was staring me down, and I was just praying, God, please have this animal walk away, walk away, walk away. Well, thankfully it did. It did walk away. But there are, there are so many memories from that summer. So where does Psalm 121 come in? Well, I was following a reading plan that summer where I was reading something from the Old Testament, something from the New Testament, and something from Psalms. I was doing that every day. And we had gone um, on a hike to a different area of the park, me and a couple other people, and we went some time, spent time hiking and enjoying God's creation. And of course, we brought our Bibles and our journals along to take some quiet time to spend with God. So after hiking for a while, I came to a spot Um, a spot on the side of a hill. Well, I guess it would be a mountain, really. And I sat down, and I took in my surroundings. I was sitting next to this beautiful, flowing stream. Um, And as I sat there and looked around, I looked up. And as I looked up high, I saw a big horn sheep with a little baby. Um, They were way far away, so I was safe. But I looked up, and they were up there. And just looked around and saw that picture. And as I sat there, I watched them. And if, you know, if all of this would have happened right now, I would have had my phone with and I would have snapped pictures and I could show you pictures right now. But it happened a long time ago, so I didn't have that option. But I sat there and I watched them. And then I turned in the scriptures and was reading. And the psalm for that day was Psalm 121. That psalm was on my plan to read. And reading those words in that setting made it a really special memory for me. The protection of God throughout life's journey was so clear, so clear in that moment as I sat there on the side of the mountain with the stream and the animals and the beauty. God was clearly speaking to me in that time, and I clearly felt God's presence. Now, while I appreciate that special memory tied to that psalm, it has great application now as well. We all know We know all too well that there are dangers in life. So many dangers that we see played out before us right now. There's spiritual, there's physical, there's economic. How about sin, doubt, disease, injury, accident, war, racial tension, natural disasters, recession, unemployment, depression. You name it, the list could go on and on. There are dangers and struggles all around us. So what more natural question to ask in response to all of that than where does my help come from? Where? Where does my help come from? The psalmist answers. The psalmist answers with a confession of faith that my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Now Psalm 121 is part of a collection of psalms known as the Songs of Ascent. And these psalms 
Psalm 120 through 134 make up this collection. And the best guess is that these psalms were collected to be used in conjunction with a journey or a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And so for that reason, Psalm 121 is most commonly understood as a liturgy of blessing for someone who's about to leave on a journey. So, summer. Summer is typically a time for lots of journeys, though that might look different this year. But when you do hit the road, when you do hit the road, do you have road trip songs that you sing? Do you have a road trip playlist or road trip songs that come to mind? These songs typically are just fun and ways to pass the time as you, as you travel down the road. How about, how about that one song? That one song that never ends, it just goes on and on, my friends. Some people started singing it not knowing what it was, and now they keep on singing it forever, just because. Okay, well, anyway, that song, that song can get a little annoying um, after a while. It could get on your nerves, even after a short while, because it is that song that just never ends. Well, anyway, the Israelites, they had road trip songs too, but theirs had much more significance than that kind of song. Theirs were much more significant than to just pass the time or to get on the nerves of passengers. This collection had a larger theological purpose. As one commentator writes that these psalms were confessional. Together as people recited these psalms, they were making claims about God, themselves, and the world in which they lived. Psalm 121 is one of those songs, and it invites people to consider, consider the source of their help. And of course, God is that source. As the commentator goes on to say, But to speak it is one thing, and to believe it is another. The psalmist assures those who pray this psalm that we do not walk alone. The maker of heaven and earth journeys with us, with us as our helper. He continues to say that the crux of Psalm 121 is that we have confidence that our maker of heaven and earth stands as guardian, watching over our coming and going both now and forevermore. Now the structure of this psalm, the structure of this psalm is not complicated. It really breaks down into two parts. We've got verses 1 and 2, and then we've got verses 3 through 8. Verses 1 and 2 are a question and a confession, and verses 3 through 8 are more of a blessing. Now, as previously stated, many interpreters imagine that this is as travelers are about to depart on a journey, perhaps a pilgrimage to Jerusalem or a festival, or maybe just any kind of journey. Such a question is natural to ask, where does my help come from? Whether one is actually thinking of a physical journey they're taking through dangerous territory, or the journey that they might take through life, because life's journey has its ups and it has its downs. Or maybe it's the journey of spiritually coming and seeking and coming closer to God. The psalmist does not look to nature for help. The psalmist comes, the psalmist knows that his help comes from the one who made the hills, one who made heaven and earth. The help comes from God. So when you think about the journey ahead of you and the challenges and the the threats and the dangers that lie before you, approach them. Approach them with the words of the psalmist, that my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You can look those fears straight on. You can look right at them and say out loud that my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I think we should all just take a moment right now. Think about those things that, um, that are dangers. Think about those things that are distractions. Things about those, think about those things that are difficult. And let's say those words together. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The rest of the psalm goes on from there, and it's a blessing. And the pronouns switch from my and I to you and your. Many interpreters see this as a change in speaker, most likely a priestly figure, or at least someone who is speaking a priestly blessing. So who is God? God is a keeper. God's identity is to protect, to shield, to watch over, to guard, to keep. God does this like a watchman, keeping guard over a city, Psalm 130, verse 8 says. 
or a bird shielding its young in the shelter of his wings, from Psalm 91.4. What does God promise to do? God promises to keep you. God will guard you. God will guard you as you go on in your journey in life and as you return home, as you go out and as you come in, as you face dangers of the day and night. I want to be clear, though. I want to be clear that this list of promises is not meant to suggest that those who walk in the shelter of God will not face any harm or that no ill will come to them. The psalmist knows this all too well, that the wicked are everywhere and they will thrive unjustly. These words of blessing and promise remind us, though, they remind us of God's protection and increase our awareness of it. Sometimes, sometimes when we're in the valley of despair, as the psalmist was in chapter 120, everything looks hopeless. Everything looks hopeless. We just need to look up. This is the answer, not only for the psalmist, but for all of us who are in trouble in life. In this life, we will go through valleys, we will go through trials. We just need to look up. Look up and see where our help comes from. We need to not keep that downcast, downward look, but look up. Look up for help is on its way. Jesus had something to say about this as well. In Luke 21, verses 26 through 28, it says, People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what's coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. This, of course, is speaking of a time when trouble is everywhere you look. And there is only one help for the psalmist or for anyone else who is surrounded with problems. Look up and rejoice. Look up and rejoice, for God is your rescue. If I belong to the great shepherd, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm going to leave you today with three challenges that I came across in preparation for this morning. Now, these challenges are great because these challenges can be completed and fulfilled by anybody of any age, any stage in life. Challenge number one, when you wake up each morning this week, raise your arms and praise and surrender to God and ask God to protect you. Challenge two, before you go to bed, at least once, if not more, but at least once this week, pray to God about the ways that you have relied on him. And thank God for his protection. And thirdly, look for different things that protect you throughout the week. Such as shelter, or seat belts, or sunglasses, or sunscreen. The list could go on. As you notice these things, thank God. Thank God for his protection. Psalm 121 ends with these great words of blessing. Hear these words for you today. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Amen.